What's next for Kazakhstan? For more on this story, I'm joined by Luca Ancheski, a lecturer in Central Asian Studies at the University of Glasgow and an authority on Russian, East European and Eurasian studies. He's in Glasgow. Luca Ancheski, thanks for joining us today. Good evening. So what began as protests triggered by high fuel prices has evolved into like a, a political opposition uh, ad hoc and fragmented, but it's growing. I mean, what's going on here? What do the protesters want? Well, no one really knows actually what's going on. And I think that what we witnessing, witnessing in the last couple of days is the evolution of a fairly localized, because it's happening in Western Kazakhstan, economic focus protest into a nationwide, very much politically oriented kind of uh, large scale demonstration in protest, which actually tried to change the Kazakhstani system almost entirely. So we've seen, uh, as the protest spread across the vast Kazakhstani territory, the, the core of the demands moved from a very narrow, a narrowly focused demand on sort of subsidizing fuel price prices into a much wider set of calls for sweeping political reform. Um, we, then, we then saw something which is different to grasp with, uh, difficult to grasp with at the moment, the emergence of violent behaviors, uh, which is not what the opposition wanted to do, but the insertion of these elements of disturbance of violence in the scene has actually complicated the Kazakhstani movement and its, its aim very much. Is that what sets this apart from, you know, other protests in recent years? We've seen protests in Kazakhstan in 2016, 2019. What, what sets these ones apart? Well, the scale. The scale really does set apart. Although uh, we, had to, we had to recognize that the way in which this started, which means people running, rallying around a single tool, a single issue, in this case, fuel prices, is the same way in which we saw protesters in the past running, uh, you know, rallying around issues like relations with Russia, China influencing Kazakhstan, and the anti capital so ecological, environmental issues. So the case, the structure has been the same. There is a particular focus which then uh, transforms the demand into political, political really matters. But what is unprecedented this time it happened at the same time Across the, across the country, and it turned very quickly, very large, and unfortunately very violent. So there is a tradition of low intensity, but kind of regular protesting in 2010's Kazakhstan. But the magnitude and the intensity of this one, it is unprecedented, now, but not unexpected. Much of the anger seems to be pointed at Kazakhstan's first president, with him having earlier stepped aside, can the current president hold on to power? Well, th this is something which we need to wait a little bit more to understand. I, even people like me who regularly work on this on Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan politics and society, struggle to see what has really changed in terms of government. Uh, there has been a total reshuffle of cabinet, which is standard practice because that's a regular thing that the government does when there is a crisis around the country. There has also been two more significant kind of dismissals. One, of course, is the complete removal of Nazarbayev from the scene, uh, getting, getting uh, rid of him when it comes to the uh, Security Council position he, he, he occupied. But also, and very, very much most importantly, the removal of Karim Masimov, who is the, the head of the Kenebe, the security services, who has been probably the most important Kazakhstani politician after Nazarbayev in the last 20 years. So if those two changes really bring along a new elite, which is entirely centered around the figure of the president, then the president can actually stay in power. What is really puzzling now is what the interference of foreign actors by our foreign troops can mean for Tokayev's ability to rule independently, really. Speaking of, into the mix now, indeed, go Russian forces supporting the Kazakhstan government. What are the implications of that? And given Kazakhstan's size and resource wealth, what's at stake for Vladimir Putin? 
Well, uh, Putin, uh, I don't know, I, I, I like football. And in football, we say you scored an open goal. So <laughs> Putin scored an open goal because he got called in into the Kazakhstan scene out of nowhere. No one would have expected that to happen. And I think that when it comes to Russia, the situation in Kazakhstan is only advantageous because they didn't really send that many people, 3,000 people. The, the, the job that this military have to do is relatively easy because you would expect these protesters not to be armed as much as they would. But the results, the benefits that they will draw to this are incredible. So I don't really think that you're going to have either a large scale Russia occupation or that this soup will stay in Kazakhstan for a protracted time, I mean, or more than one year. I mean, my idea is that they, they have come in, they will do the job, and then eventually they will go back. The problem, though, is now you have established a relation of direct dependency between Tokayev and Putin. So put, uh, not, um, Tokayev is aware that his political destiny lies with Putin, and that's not a, a situation where you want to be, because you, you will now be reminded about this kind of debt you contracted in 2022 every time you have to deal with Russia, bilaterally, multilaterally, commercially, in other economic areas. And that's to me, uh, sets up Kazakhstan foreign policy for the last 20 years, for the next 20 years. We're going to have a much more Russia-oriented Kazakhstan uh, and possibly a much more entrenched Kazakhstan within the Eurasian Union. So there is change. We, before we discussed that they could not be changed very much into domestic politics, we don't know yet, but they will be changing foreign policy level for sure. Let me just ask you quickly, um, you know, the internet is now disrupted in the country, that complicates things, violence is stepping up on the streets, no real leader of the protest movement at this point. If the government is not toppled, can there be transformation? No, no, I, I think that's the, the accession of the, the, the Russian troops into the country is uh, a, a step towards the, the, the establishment of a new situation which is very much similar to the one prior, although it would be more repressive, but more Tokayev centered and kind of inevitably more authoritarian. Because mm. this new leader now it's, it's, does not have more any legitimacy, it's not democratic, it's very much connected with Putin. So he does not have the free ends to change things as he would have had in the, like uh, last month. So I don't think there is a good future for Kazakhstan, unfortunately. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. That's Luka Anchekski with the University of Glasgow. I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.